YouTube viewers out there. Welcome to another episode of Baking with Brian. This is our cozy home, usually Gina, but today it's Brian. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Wait. It hasn't been enough time. It's only been two weeks. I only do it every four weeks. What is going on? What is happening? Somebody has a special request. We've got a special request for a cake to be baked, and I'm going to bake it. We've got a friend at work who's retired, so I got to get it baked because he ain't coming back. He requests me to bake him a banana pudding cake. Banana pudding cake. Take a look at this picture. He sends me this picture. I don't know. I'm always up for a, one heck of a task, but we're going to see if we can do this one. This is going to be something else. All right. I hope you like it, Monty. I hope it's good because we're not going to be able to taste it. We're not going to be able to test it. we got to send it to work untouched. All right. So let's start out with the recipe for the cake. The cake recipe says it will take one cup or two sticks of unsalted butter, softened, of course, two cups of granulated sugar, four large eggs, we're going to use five medium-sized eggs. We don't have large eggs here, but we've got a few. One teaspoon of vanilla extract, two cups of all-purpose flour, a half a teaspoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, a quarter teaspoon of salt, one cup of mashed ripe bananas, about two or three medium bananas, they were a little on the small side, so we went with four. And one cup of sour cream for this cake recipe. I am no professional. I usually do the box the easy way. This is all made ingredients. This is all homemade. So we're going to see what we're going to do. So I've got all my ingredients laid out here. Sorry, not me, but my fantastic helper, my little baker, Gina. Thank you, Gina, for getting all this together for me. You're welcome. Really appreciate her. She does more than, more than what I give her credit for. Watch her head swell up. That's right. <laughs> okay, so we got everything together here. We're going to start putting together this cake recipe. So we're going to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Our oven is preheated via Gina. She took care of that. And now we're going to grease and flour the bunt pan. We're going to try a bunt cake again, a bunt pan. We're not going to use the nine by 13 baking dish. You can make this out of that nine by 13 baking dish if you would like to prefer. But I'm going to try to make this, this. We're going to see how it turns out. All right, so what did you do with my buck pan? Here it is. Got it way over here in the corner. We're going to spray that down with lots of spray really well. All right, that's done. Next, we're gonna start putting together the cake batter in a large bowl, We've got a large bowl here. We're gonna to cream together the softened butter. We've got the butter here and the granulated sugar. Put some butter in here. It's really soft. Sugar. 
until light and fluffy. We're gonna cream it together. Start out a little slow here. Start with the eggs one at a time. Thank you. Again, we are using eggs from Adams County, Ohio. Thank you, Doug, for those eggs. Keep them coming. Got another egg to put in here. I haven't mastered the way to do it with one hand while I'm mixing and all that good stuff yet, but Gina's coaching me. Oh, gotta watch it, got some shells in that one. All right, we saved it. Last egg. Teaspoon of vanilla extract here. That's good. Next thing, we've got a separate bowl here. We've got the flour. We need to add the, we've got the baking powder in there and the baking soda and the salt already mixed together. We're gonna to gradually add this dry ingredient to the butter mixture, alternating it with sour cream. We've got our sour cream here. We're gonna put some of that in there as well. So we'll start with a little bit of this. A little bit of sour cream in it. spatula in here so that this thing gonna be something else It does. It smells really good. I 
All right, next, the ingredients for the banana pudding swirl. If that wasn't good enough, we're going to put some swirl to it. We need a box of instant pudding mix. Got a box right here and a cup of milk. My cup of milk in the refrigerator here. Pour the milk in. Get my pudding in there. Mm. It says in a small bowl, whisk together the instant banana pudding mix and the milk until smooth and thicken. It says to pour half of the cake batter into the prepared pan. Get this out of my mood. Here. Get my cake pan here. Half of the batter into the cake pan. Okay, it's about half. I'm probably going to mess it up here when I put this squirrel in there, so we'll get it round here pretty even. Then it says to drop spoonfuls of the banana pudding mixture over the batter. Spoonfuls. Spoon. Is this the hardest recipe you've done yet? I don't know. Maybe. Like I said, I do not, I, I do cake box mixes. I don't like homemade stuff. But hey, there's always the first time. All right, getting some of that in there. Now I need to go get me a Knife or a toothpick. Knife, toothpick, knife, toothpick. Well, let's go with a knife. We'll do a knife. Swirl it into the back. Swirl it in. Maybe I should have put a whole bunch of it in there. Here we go. Swirl away. Swirl the pudding in there. And then I get to put the rest of the cake batter in on top of it. So that's like, like the pudding middle of the cake. Next, the rest of the cake batter. This is gonna be heavy cake. over this pan cake oh well now it's time to bake it we're gonna put it in our preheated oven for about 
55 to 65 minutes or until, as usual, a toothpick inserted into the center portion comes out clean. All right, going into the oven. Nice and straight. There we go. All right, now we're gonna let the cake bake and then we'll be back shortly. Mm. Whip. Time to check. Looks pretty clean there. See if this cake is going to come out of the butt pan. Hopefully, I get another good one. We'll see. That is so. There we go. That is so unfair. Another one. Okay, I need to let it cool. A little bit further, you can tell it's a little bit warm yet. All right. Now we can start making the frosting. We're going to put a glaze. We're going to make the glaze, which is optional. You can either put the glaze on it or not. All right. Now we're going to mix up the glaze. The in ingredients for the glaze is one cup of powdered sugar, one cup of powdered sugar here, two tablespoons of milk, and a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So I'm going to put the two tablespoons of milk in first. And the cup of powdered sugar. It says to whisk it together until smooth. Okay, got that together, and now we need to wait for the cake to dry, to uh, cool off a little bit more. We want it to be cool when we put our glaze on, and then we will proceed with getting ready to add those vanilla wafers to that cake and to top everything off. Okay, one thing I noticed that I felt like we needed a little more glaze since I'm going to use the glaze to stick the vanilla wafers to the sides of this cake as the picture shows. I've also noticed that the ingredients and the directions don't exactly match the picture. So I'm also going to add uh, another bit of vanilla pudding to the outside of this cake after I apply the vanilla wafers to the side of it. I'm hoping the drizzle, when I put it on there, is going to, the glaze is going to help secure those vanilla wafers. And then after that happens, I will mix up some more vanilla pudding and drizzle that over top of it and then put the crumbs on top. Uh, again, I noticed that the instructions and the ingredients did not match the picture. And I'm gonna to try to make this as close to this picture as possible. But you don't want your pudding to set up like now, normal pudding. Ex exactly, you don't want your pudding to be really, really thick. You want it to be thinner 
so that it kind of drizzles down the sides. And then when we put it in the refrigerator, it'll firm up once, once that happens. All right, so we've got the glaze here. I've got my cake. It's cool, pretty cool to touch. I've got it on the tray here, the display tray. I'm gonna start drizzling some of this over top of it. Hope it works the way I want it to work. It's gonna create a little bit of a mess, but we'll clean that up later. I'm gonna use some of this, like I said, to the back side of my vanilla wafers to have it actually attach to the cake. Not cascaded like the others, but it's close. Okay, so the pudding was thickening up too much, and it wasn't going to give me the same effect that I was looking for that the picture shows. So what I ended up doing is I made some more glaze, and I put some of the pudding in the glaze to give it that yellow color to try to help it show the consistency like the picture has in it. Now I'm hoping that it's gonna give me the effect that I'm looking for. I think I need to add maybe some tad mint pudding to it. More, not much. Dollop. Don't want it too thick, but I don't want it too thin as well. I don't want it to just run off of the cake like the glaze did. Uh, it needed to be just a little bit thicker so now, I'm going to take a spoon and drizzle it over the cake to see. Still a little bit runny. I think I should add just a little bit more pudding to it. Trying to experiment here a little bit. Good or it's gonna look like no good. 
a little thicker. May not be the prettiest cake, but it, it, I think it's going to be tasting good. Of course, I don't get to taste it. Put the crunched up vanilla wafers on the top. Let me get me another small bowl. Crunch them up. Doesn't quite look like the picture, but it's the first time for me making it, and it doesn't have to look pretty to taste good. So I hope it tastes really well. I hope you like it, Monty. I'll bring it to work. We'll all have a piece. As usual, we want to thank you for stopping by. Also, we want to rem you want to remember to like and subscribe. If you would like me to bake something for you, if you'd like to see me bake something, uh, just comment down below. Let me know what, uh, what you'd like me to try out. may not be the prettiest thing, but I'll give it a try. I'm always up for the challenge. So, again, thanks for stopping by and hope to see you soon.